Hi, Captain Steve here, and welcome to episode number 34 of Boat Test Reports. This week, Brunswick's CEO talks about the future of boating after the pandemic. We'll look at Alumacraft's multi-species, multi-use affordable 185. See the first video of Cruiser's Yacht's new 42 GLS day boat. Watch Chaparral's 23 surf in action. Find out what sets Everglades 340 dual console apart from others and inspect Absolute's new Flybridge yacht. For those who need a holiday gift idea, we look at Yamaha's new water toy everyone will want, and then we'll explain the advantages of Lowrance's new fish finding sonar, and lots more. Let's start with the news. Brunswick Corporation is the parent company of Mercury Marine, Boston Whaler, Sea Ray, and at least five aluminum boat brands, as well as many accessory brands, so the company's top brass clearly has their finger on the pulse of boating. Recently, Brunswick's CEO appeared on the CNBC show Power Lunch to discuss boat sales during the pandemic. We have incredible momentum in the industry now. We've been tra- attracted in a new demographic, younger, as you said, uh, more women, more ethnic minorities. I think that provides us with great momentum, not just next year, but into uh, future years. What other factors could make up for what otherwise could be a, a quiet period after people go back to normal? Field inventories are very low this year, so a lot of people who would normally have replaced that boat didn't get a chance to this year. We expect that replacement uh, trade to come through next year. We were in the middle of a very short time window to make the decision to get into boating. We think that's going to be a much longer window for next year, so people making decisions even now in the winter to acquire boats. I looked at retail finance applications this morning. They were up about 90% over the same period last year. So that is a really strong uh, leading indicator of good retail next year. Have boat prices increased as a result of this? No, I would say not. Boat prices have been pretty stable. We have a very broad portfolio of of boat offerings, Kelly. So about 80% of our boats cost less than $50,000. We offer a number of ways onto the ladder, value offerings at $10,000, And we'll be offering even more uh, beginning next year. So plenty of ways onto the boating ladder for for anybody who wants to get on it. What do you think accounts for the surge in female boat buying and boat ownership? The average Brunswick boat buy was in the low 50 years of age up until this year, and now it's in the high 40s. So that's enough for a significant demographic trend. It's a way to recreate while maintaining social distancing. And I, I think people see that and appreciate it and will continue to appreciate it. Uh, next year and beyond. Speaking of good news, the Bimini Big Game Club in the Bahamas reopened recently. The hotel, which first opened in the 1930s, is famous for hosting anglers and water sports enthusiasts from around the world. Guests have included Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King as well as Ernest Hemingway. The club's marina has 75 slips and can accommodate yachts up to 140 feet long. Median low water depth is 9 feet, and utilities include 50 and 100 amp shore power, city water, and full Wi-Fi coverage. Activities at the club include inshore and offshore fishing, as well as diving, snorkeling, and just enjoying the natural beauty of the Bahamas. Recently, Cruiser's Yachts followed up on their highly successful 38 GLS with the launch of the new 42 GLS, which takes a good idea even further. Let's take a look. The 42 GLS is a large dayboat coupe designed for entertaining friends and family and for water sports of all kinds. Both stern quarter bulwarks electrically fold down, creating a large open deck for swimming, parties, or scuba diving, as well as creating more room for entertaining and just hanging out. The boat was made to party with large groups. In the stern, there is a U-shaped settee opposite the wet bar with grill and bar and two stools face aft to be a part of the party. All this is under an electrical mechanical sunroof. Guests can go forward through the walkthrough windshield to the bow in total security without having to negotiate narrow side decks. Once there, guests can sunbathe or enjoy the venue for a picnic or cocktail party. Below decks is a large settee for six which converts to a double berth. Aft is a galley with a refrigerator, TV and microwave oven. Behind the galley and wet head is a large cabin with TV and privacy curtain. The 42 GLS is powered by triple Yamaha 350 horsepower Mercury Verados with triple 400s or 450s available. We'll be testing the 42 GLS soon, so keep an eye out for that. Absolute Yachts has a new model, the 50 Fly, which fills a gap between the 47 and 52 foot models in the Italian manufacturer's lineup. 
Her flying bridge is among the largest in class and features seating that wraps around a table, a wet bar, a large sun pad, and side-by-side -side seats at the helm, and overhead is a hardtop that protects guests from UV rays. The cockpit has a sun pad on the stern with another sofa-style lounge protected by the flying bridge overhang. Moving inside, the galley is aft and a port, and the dinette's table can be configured for cocktails or dinner. Opposite is a sofa, which creates a proper salon. A door alongside the lower helm makes it easy for the captain to tie up. Below decks, she has a full beam master, a VIP stateroom in the bow, and a guest cabin. Crew quarters are aft. Keep an eye out for our full test video and inspection report on the 50 fly on BoatTest.com coming soon. Now, this is cool. If you have a water sports enthusiast on your gift list this year, check out the Yamaha Sea Wing 2. At 7.9 pounds, it's one of the lightest sea scooters available. It has a four horsepower motor and two speeds for the dual thrusters. It can dive to 100 feet and is neutrally buoyant. Power is provided by a 14.8 volt 10 amp hour battery that charges in less than two hours. Retail price is $995.99. Lowrance has unveiled its most powerful Elite Series fish finder chart plotter, the Elite FS. The latest model in the company's Elite Fishing System combines a full complement of fish finding tools with a display that's easier to use and install. Its new Active Target Live Sonar gives anglers live action views of fish moving in and around structures. Active Target can be set to three viewing options, forward, down, or scout. Forward and down view let anglers track fish in front of or below the live sonar transducer. Scout mode provides a wider overhead view of structure and fish activity in front of the transducer, which is good for finding bait balls and large schools of fish. High resolution sea map contour plus inland and coastal charts are preloaded into the Elite FS. They let anglers find key fishing areas such as ledges, drop-offs, and ditches and navigate with precision to fish holding areas. The displays are available in 7 and 9 inch models. Alumacraft's competitor FSX 185 is an aluminum boat with fishing and family focused features. Let's take a look at both. We'll start with the casting deck at the bow. It's all carpeted, so very comfortable. There's padding underneath. Notice in the center of the deck there's a pedestal so we can move any of the chairs from the cockpit to the bow. On the three and a half inch cap rail, there's a groove cut into one side of it. That's called an Alumatrack, and we can add Alumatrack accessories. At the stern, there's another casting platform, 22 inches deep, and of course it goes full beam. And in the center, take a look at this, a 22 gallon live well, and it's got dual access. Now let's take a look at the family features. First of all, this boat is equipped with the optional console and bow cushions. Four seats, these are all on pedestals so they can be moved anywhere about the boat or removed as the case may be. Why are there grab handles to both sides of the casting platform? Because we have two jump seats. Now also at the stern, notice that there's a pedestal base slash socket for a ski toe pylon. That is standard, the ski toe pylon itself is optional. Chaparral's 23 Surf is one of three new models from the manufacturer focused on wake surfing with a forward-facing stern drive. Naturally, the Surf package is going to start with an arch and board racks. This, however, is the optional version, the EFX2 electrically folding arch. In the center index storage compartment, ballast sack from Fat Sack. This one holds 425 pounds. Next is the Malibu Surfgate package that's controlled from the medallion touchscreen, and of course, we can select either port or starboard. The next part of the surf package is the seven inch medallion touch screen. I have a surf icon right here and when I touch that, now I have control of the speed, the ballast tanks, which side we're gonna be surfing on. But what we haven't seen before is this nifty little feature. Ratcheting seat back that goes into multiple positions to convert into an aft facing seat. All the way at the stern, there's a 23 inch swim platform. There's a concealed reboarding ladder to the starboard side. This one also has the optional 25 inch extended platform. As a surf platform, while she may not be at the competitive level, she put out a good ideal wave for surfers up to the intermediate level with a clean face and good crest. It even allows for some trick moves. Everglades is known for its premium quality boats and innovations, as well as being unsinkable. Let's take a look at some features of the company's 340DC. 
Let's start in the cockpit where we see examples of the versatility designed into the 340DC. Starting with the aft seats that fold out of the transom, we note sturdy stainless steel supports and there are several upholstery designs available. To starboard, the cockpit wet bar with sink is set into a solid surface countertop. Moving forward, to port, the lounge has seating for one person facing forward, two people facing the helm, or one person can stretch out and face aft as a spotter for water sports or just relax. To starboard, the helm has a compass on the wheel centerline. Below are two Garmin 16-inch GPS map XSV screens. Just ahead of the helm is the entry to the head, which is easy to get into because of the cutout overhead. Overhead is a smoke glass skylight to keep the head bright. When the time comes to head forward to the bow, open the air dam and press a button on the dash and the center windshield slides open electrically. In the bow, there's wraparound seating with 21 inch deep seat backs, all padded. The Everglades 340DC is a big luxury oriented dual console with features that can meet the many needs of a boating family that wants a premium built boat with virtually everything about her done right and with best practices. Here's another question from the captain's test. You are approaching another vessel and see that she has the signal flag A hoisted. What should you do? A. Give the vessel a wide berth as she's carrying dangerous goods. B. Attempt to call the vessel on VHF radio because she's disabled. C. Stop your vessel instantly. Or D. Slow your vessel and keep well clear because she has a diver down. And the answer is D. Slow your vessel and keep well clear because she has a diver down. This is the internationally recognized diver down flag. In North America, you can also display the easily recognized red flag with the diagonal white stripe. In either case, this is what you'll display when you're playing with your new Yamaha Sea Wing that you got for Christmas. And speaking of which, this will be our last episode of 2020. And on behalf of the team at BoatTest.com, I want to wish you all a healthy and happy holiday season. As always, if you like the show, sign up for our daily newsletter and please keep the photos, videos, and comments coming. Until then, for BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water at a distance. <laughs>